might think. Before being introduced in the House, the text of a bill may already have made the tour of its prestigious corridors, under the watchful and symbolic gaze of some of the state's greatest figures, in order to garner the broadest possible support for the proposed text even before it is introduced. This is one way to ensure a majority in favor of the text. Once brought before the House, the bill is scrutinized, debated, and sometimes even amended. These technical and political discussions occur within the standing committees of the House, which are composed of elected representatives of the various parties of the majority and the opposition, who bring their own expertise and political views to bear in discussing, challenging, or amending the text of the measure. This is where the real parliamentary work, less visible to the general public, takes place. When a text obtains a majority in the committee vote, the process takes it back to the House board so that it may either be adopted by a plenary session or sent back to committee for further discussions. The large paintings that adorn the walls of the oldest rooms reflect the heyday of parliamentary work and recall some of the crucial moments and ceremonies of our history. These House committees investigate matters of national defense, justice, health and finance, for example. Other special committees deal with subjects as diverse as naturalization, military procurement or rail safety. After discussions in committee, the bill returns to a plenary session of the House. These sessions are public meetings, and the voting in the House traditionally takes place on Thursday afternoons. It is then that the definitive fate of a bill is decided. The bell rings. Voting is about to take place. Members return to their seats and prepare to use the individual electronic voting system. Vote. Results. The results of the vote are displayed on numeric displays on either side of the debating chamber, presenting the majority's wishes. If the bill is passed, it then becomes law by royal assent and after publication in the Belgian official journal, Le Moniteur Belge or Belgisch Staatsblatt. As from the date of this official publication, ignorance of the law is no excuse. This debating chamber is certainly one of the centers of power in a democracy. It is also here, before the two assemblies, the House and the Senate, in joint session of the elected bodies, that the King swears the constitutional oath that makes him the chief magistrate of the state. I swear that I will observe the constitution and laws of the Belgian people to maintain national independence and territorial integrity. The Palace of the Nation has also kept up with more modern times. Recently, it acquired new committee rooms, the European Room and the International Room. The names of both rooms, which are sometimes also used for meetings with the press, evoke Belgium's role at the heart of European and international politics, two sectors which are fundamental to the powers and responsibilities of the House. On the way to the other wing of the palace, we leave the green carpets reserved for members of the House and discover the red carpets of the Senate. The Senate also has a presidency which carries out the representative function of the state. And here we see the Hall of Questors. This political institution, consisting of elected representatives, establishes the budget and expenditure for the parliamentary assemblies proposes the appointment of staff, and manages the material needs of parliamentary work. The Senate, which sometimes used to be referred to as the Upper House, was by its nature reserved for citizens of more mature years, as senators had to be over the age of 40. 
Over the years, it was also considered that it should represent the intermediate administrative bodies of the state. For a long time, there were provincial senators, and since the reforms that moved Belgium towards a federal model, also senators known as community senators. Lastly, below the senatorial gold and purple, co-opted senators also took their seats. Their acknowledged expertise is intended to guarantee the conduct and expertise of substantive debates. Not to mention the senators by right, such as the children of the royal family, who may one day, perhaps, accede to the throne and therefore be expected to be familiar with the work of the nation's elders. The Senate may require clarification from the government on this or that point, but it no longer scrutinizes the work of the executive branch itself, except in international affairs, because it is in this field, that of international and European treaties in particular, that it has developed its expertise and debates. In a Belgium currently undergoing radical change, the Senate has lost some of its traditional substance. The senators are increasingly focused on the major societal debates, whose value and importance is universally acknowledged. The end of life, medically assisted reproduction, euthanasia, criminal proceedings, and the spirit of the law, and so forth. In the future, the Senate may continue to exist, but in a form with increased representation as the House of Federal Entities, representing the interests of the regions and communities, just as Germany's Senate has done. The Senate would no longer be in permanent session, but rather meet just once a month. And so we come to the end of this visit to the center of Belgium's parliamentary democracy. Returning via the ground floor of the Palace of the Nation, one cannot help but reflect that it was here, in this less prestigious room than the debating chambers on the upper floor, that the tough negotiations were held on the new reform of the state and the formation of a government after the most protracted political crisis in the history of Belgium. Regardless of the evolution of these institutions and their ultimate destiny, let us always remember that it was to win the right to suffrage and democratic representation that revolutionary and subsequently more political battles have taken place here since 1830. To provide citizens with a place and a system of representation for their individual and collective interests. And thus, to meet this desire for democracy, a political system of decisions by the people and for the people, where only the people are sovereign. At times, this system may appear complex or too slow, but we should remember the words of former British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Democracy is the worst form of government, except for all those other forms that have been tried from time to time. This palace of the nation is the symbol of the equal rights and duties of all citizens. This is the common house, symbolizing our ability to live together. Mm -hmm.